Okay, so in this video, what we're going to do is go over how it is we set up the field. While we're setting up the field, we are also checking the field for anything that might be unsafe or any field conditions that should be reported to the teams and to the head referee. When you arrive, you should be approximately 30 minutes early and congregate in the referee's area, which is typically in the middle of the field. When two officials arrive, they should both grab 12 cones each and agree to start to set the fields. They'll start in the middle and both of them will walk in the opposite direction to get to either end zone. When they get to the middle of the field on both sides, they should look at each other and confirm that they are in fact lined up and ready to start pacing to the sideline. If the field has a single post for the goal post, such as in this picture, it's very easy to find the center of the field. If on the other hand, we have soccer nets or soccer posts, then we'll line up in the middle, look at each other, and then start pacing 32.5 yards to the sideline. That's because we have a 65 yard wide field in touch football. As each official walks to the sideline, they will stop at 32 and a half yards, and then they will look at each other and both put down a cone. After they've placed the cone, they will then walk 20 yards into the dead ball line. They will then stop, look at each other, and place a cone. They will then simultaneously walk 24 yards towards the back of the end zone and place a cone that marks the hash mark. When they've both looked at each other and placed that cone, they will then return to the goalpost the entire time scanning the field for any unsafe or hazards that might be present. They will then look at each other and begin to walk directly at each other while pacing off the appropriate yardages. First, they will walk 10 yards and place the cone. When they place the cone, they should look at each other and make sure that they're lined up straight. Next, they will walk another 15 yards, which will take them to the 25 yard line cone. They will again look at each other and place the cones. They will then mark 20 yards. This will mark the area that the team benches should be in. 10, 20. At this point, 10, 20, they will then look at each other and mark the cones. Now you'll notice that this is an NFL sized field, not a CFL sized field. And as a result, the officials are only 10 yards apart. So what they'll do is they'll walk until they meet and they'll realize that they both paced off only five yards. This will tell them exactly how wide the field is, or rather how long the field is, and then they'll have to fix the field. So to fix the field, they'll stand in the middle of the field where they met, turn around, walk 10 yards back, and then place the kickoff cone, which is always 10 yards from center field. So in this case, kickoffs would occur at the 40 yard line. When this is done, the official will then proceed to the other side of the field and do the exact same thing. So in this case, both officials get a straight line. So in this case, both officials will then return to the middle of the field, check with each other, and then they will pace to the goal line, 32 and a half yards, and place a cone. They will then go 20 yards to the dead ball line and place a cone. They will then mark 24 yards to the hash mark and place a cone. They will then return to the goal line cone. They will look at each other and line up and then they will pace 10 yards and line each other up and set a cone. They will then pace 15 more yards to mark the 25 yard line, lining each other up and set a cone. And then they will mark 10, 20 yards again. 10, 20 yards again, marking the bench area. And then they would set a cone, which would indicate the 45 yard mark. They will then go to the middle of the field and return back 10 yards to set and relocate 
the kicking cone, which should be 10 yards from the middle of the field. So in this case, again, it'll be placed on the 40, not on the 40. This marks the 20 yard neutral zone for kickoff, and we've now thoroughly evaluated the field. While the officials are completed, they will return. Well, let's get rid of that. When they are done setting the 45 cone, they will then walk back to the middle of the field. And as you can see by the lines in the diagram, these officials have been able to survey the entire field very well and identify any hazards. They will then report these hazards to the head referee. Now, we're going to see it live in the next part of this video. Okay, so here we go. And the clock has started. You'll notice both officials are walking on an angle directly towards the middle of the field. They're surveying to see any potholes or any hard objects on the field, any cement blocks or glass bottles or pop cans or anything like that that might be on the field. So now we've arrived in the middle of the field. Half of the cones you'll put down, you'll come back to this spot later. Being in the middle of the field, we'll now march off 32 and a half yards. If there are lines on the field, we will not reset the field inside or outside the lines. Rather, we will use the lines. But keep in mind whether or not the field is wider or more narrow than it should be. In this case, it perfectly lined. As that official set the first cone, there are lines on the field. He is now confirming the length of the end zone as he walks to the back. He'll make a mental note of this so that when he meets with the official on the other side of the field, they'll concur that both sides of the field have exactly the same yards in the end zone. If they do not, they will correct it when come back for their second trip. He is now marking 24 yards from the sideline, which is where the hash mark is. This is a very useful not only to mark back of the end zone for plays that are in or out of bounds, but also when umpires and referees are set middle of the field, they are able to identify where the hash marks are because often the fields that we play on do not have hash marks. Now both officials are on the goal line cone and they are walking toward each other. Now it's important that they count in their head but look at each other and the cones behind the official in front of them to ensure that they're walking in a straight line. After marking the 10 yard line, we're now going to mark the 25 yard line cone, which is another 15 yards up, looking at each other and making sure it's a straight line. Now we'll do 20 yards. This is marching off the bench area. And again, make sure you're looking at each other the entire time so that you maintain a straight line. Now that you've placed both cones, you can return back to the middle of the field to do the other side. Notice that they have not reset the 45s or the kicking cones yet. This is where they're going to return at the end, and they'll be able to fix both left and right side of the field when they're finally finished. So now we've arrived back at the middle of the field, so you can pick up the other half of your cones and march 32 and a half yards to the other sideline. Once again, if there is a line painted on the field, we will always use that line. However, we must report that information back to the referee so we can tell the teams exactly what the dimensions are of the field they're playing on. The official will now mark the back of the end zone, and in this case, if you're counting his strides, you'll see that there's exactly 20 yards, and this is a perfectly lined field. 20. And now 24 yards in from the end zone, marking the hash mark. When walking in the back of the end zone, it's important that you look at the first cone you set at the dead ball line on the other side of the field and the hash mark cone you've already set so that you maintain a straight line. 
you'll notice that as he walks directly toward the goal line cone, he's making a straight line. So when setting fields, if you look at the cone across the field, you'll find yourself walking in a very straight line, and that's what the other officials should be doing. Now both officials are walking directly at each, past each other at the cones that have been laid behind them. They will stop when they drop a cone and wait for confirmation from both officials that their cones are straight. If you do not do this, you'll find yourself having to waste time backtracking and fixing cones that were not straight. Now we're going to march the 20 yards for the team bench area, and this will mark the 45 yard line. Again, in non-regulation fields, the kicking cones still must be 10 yards back from the center of the field. So when you mark your 45 yard cone, continue to march toward each other, and if you both count 10 yards and meet each other, then it's a perfectly lined field. In this case, they both march 10, and they've confirmed that it's a perfectly lined field. If, on the other hand, there were 5 yards before they got to each other, or 15, they would know that the field is irregular, and then they would turn around and march back 10 yards from the center field to fix it. You can see how nice the straight line is on the cones, both in the dead ball area and the sideline. Notice that as the exactly set up a field when two officials work together in this manner. And as we approach six minutes, the entire field is set up perfectly and we are ready for play. I hope you enjoyed this training video. This is Chris Almas of the Hamilton Touch Football Officials Association.